Hope you had a great weekend. So it looks like we're taking the momentum we had late last week in quantum and bringing it into this week, especially into the rate cuts. So we're gonna look at a bunch of different quantum stocks. We're gonna look at the quantum watch list, our stock heat map, a couple news items that might be additional catalysts for this week for quantum. We got a lot going on. We're also gonna take a look at Veritone and we're gonna take a look at Archer Aviation, a couple stocks that are starting to wake up. So we're gonna look at Rigetti, D-Wave, Ion Q, and Seal SQ, all stocks that had some interesting price action through the day. And all I ask of you guys before we jump in, of course, just smash that like button. That helps others see and stay informed. And I wanna mention also that the channel just crossed 8,000 subscribers, which is amazing because in January of this year had a big fat zero subscribers. So it's been a wild year in 2025, and I appreciate a lot of you I know have been here since the beginning. I appreciate all of you who have suffered through those early days and are still, still here now, and I appreciate all the new subscribers as well. So thanks so much for being a part of this channel, and let's jump in. So a big shout out to Chris, who is a channel member and also a big advocate for quantum and a big investor in D-Wave. He sent me this article from Reuters, UK and US to sign multi-billion dollar tech deal during Trump's visit. Article directly from Reuters. While the final details are still being negotiating, the embassy said the partnership will focus on key technologies, including artificial intelligence, semiconductor telecommunications, and quantum. Cutting edge technology such as AI and quantum will transform our lives. We also saw the IonQ acquisition of Oxford Ionics in the UK said, well, actually you can do this, but there's gonna be some conditions and that intellectual property has to stay stateside and a bunch of other things like we get oversight and this is a national security issue. So this is really gonna cement that quantum is on the roadmap as a security threat to the US and the UK, and they're gonna sign, it looks like this pact, which I think could be a major catalyst for quantum going into the week. And we're going into a week with pretty much 100% chance of a rate cut. Speaking of the rate cut, so for those of you who don't know, we have the FOMC meeting coming up at 11 a.m. Eastern, Wednesday, September 17th. A lot of the stocks that we're seeing in the market and a lot of the optimism we're seeing in the market are pricing in at least a quarter of a point rate cut, if not a half of a point. Most likely it will be a quarter and, and basically no one is pricing in not a rate cut, a hold. So if we are to here at the FOMC meeting that there's no cut, I think you would see a lot of pullback in the market and there'd be some angry folks. Speaking of that, the S&P 500 closed at 6,600 and the NASDAQ has extended its record streak. We kind of saw consistent grind higher on our major indices. We also saw that the US touched new highs on Monday as US-China trade talks unfolded in Madrid and the S&P rose nearly half a percent. So things are looking pretty good across the different markets. And just taking a look at the heat map, you can see that tech is still doing quite well. Google is having an incredible year. I think I read somewhere that it's up 80% from its April lows. Before this last earnings, when the stock was $180 a share, and now it's $250 a share, I actually put out a video specifically about Google and how it's undervalued and how it's a great buy. And it's one of my core mag seven positions. Oracle's still doing great. Amazon, Tesla had a big day. I think uh, Elon did a share buyback himself. So he purchased a billion dollars of his own shares. And then just looking down the quantum watch list, BTQ Technologies is now almost a $5 a share stock. And this stock was down to low twos not so long ago. So this is that blockchain technology company, Skywater. Skywater is the chip fabricator for D-Wave and they're an onshore chip manufacturer. And IonQ had another great day, 6%. So they set their all-time high on Friday and then came over the weekend and said, that wasn't enough. Here's another 6%. Google 
for a mag seven stock just absolutely had a crazy day four percent plus and d wave Rigetti also ended green and you can see just down the watch list and down many of the tickers in the stock market there was green but especially in quantum there's a lot of optimism at this point in time so i'd like to start with Rigetti. so Rigetti is one of the stocks that had a ton of euphoria and a parabolic upward trend i want you guys to see kind of how i look at this so so this was a an unhealthy rise followed by an unhealthy fall now look at the difference this time from the low to potentially it retesting its all time high. You see the difference there, that angle. So when stocks move and they make gains over a slower period of time, they build support. So people entered here, they entered here, they entered here. So there's people that are waiting to add more like me if the stock moves down to 15 or $16 a share. So there's more support that's built up for a stock than when it just goes to the moon. And also in 2025, we have a bunch more information about quantum and we have more momentum sector wide. And so the playing field has changed and quantum stocks are getting more expensive. Does that mean that we can't have a pullback absolutely we can absolutely definitely have a pullback but right now what's what's interesting with this rigetti setup is we're getting really close to that all-time high and it's actually wanted to maybe test twenty dollars a share we had a wick touch at twenty dollars a share and we're just not too far away from 2156 which is that all-time high on the wick touch and we have bullish catalysts going in to the week. So for Rigetti, I'll just give a couple of cases really quick here. So for Rigetti in my base case, I see it kind of hugging 19 and 20 as it has been. In my bullish case, I see it getting above 20 and retesting that all time high in an ultra bullish case, getting into price discovery like IonQ. In a bearish case, I see it retracing back down to a level of support like 16, where it has a lot more support and potentially more buyers. Okay, now taking a look at D-Wave. So D-Wave actually made it to almost $19 a share today. And D-Wave has had a lot of strength in the stock. In fact, I was just talking to the Discord today about this, that really since May, when we had this gap up, there's only been one buy the dip opportunity at 1356. And really the stock has held above 14, 14 and a half dollars. And it looks like currently it's in an uptrend. And we also know that D wave has posted higher highs. And we also know that D wave has been pretty, I want to say shallow with their news compared to the first part of the year. We haven't heard about any system sales, any new partnerships, any new significant applications, any new significant papers, and all of those could still be in store for 2025. Also, D-Wave is 52% institutionally owned at the time of this writing. So the institutions are really the ones driving where the stock is going from here. And I see a lot more positive catalysts in the future for this stock to move it forward than negative catalyst for the stock price. Now, of course, the valuation is detached from its income and D-Wave is going to need to figure out how to make more system sales or how to get more customers or the stock will go down in a bear market. And I've been talking to that also, I actually sent a couple more lengthy messages about this, but I keep mentioning on the channel because I think all of you who follow the channel should know that these stocks are enjoying a bull market and a risk on environment. When we lose the bull market and when we lose the risk and when we go to risk off, then these stocks will likely reach it, retrace down to more uh, reasonable levels that are closer to their valuation. Does that mean they'll completely collapse? I think there's too much momentum in quantum for that to happen, but there could be significant retracement. So every quantum investor should be prepared for volatility. And now looking at IonQ, but to finish up D-Wave, I think we're really close to the 20s and it wouldn't be too hard for D-Wave to come up and maybe test an all-time high. And it could do that on technicals alone, but 
we know that D-Wave is very good with their PR and we know that they could have some cards up their sleeve. So I think we have more in store for 2025 for D-Wave as far as positive catalysts. So now taking a look at kind of the stair step we've been making, this has been a very textbook just stair step here. As you can see with INQ, we just captured 55 and held it all day on Friday. And then today captured 58, had some sell off and closed in the high 58. So INQ, I did get my price target at the start of the year at $100 a share. And this is future looking. This is looking at what the company will do in the future, not at what it will do now. And it looks like the stock, at least for now, is looking for a higher high in this market backdrop. Now, of course, it could come down. But I do see that this $48 level now that was such an area of resistance, I could see that being a support for IonQ in the future. So I'm looking at 48 as a key level and we're in price discovery. So it's really hard to say where IonQ is going to go from here. All right, CLSQ, I know this stock has been a frustrating stock for a lot of you all who have held IonQ. We're going to look at four hour candles here. And we can see that definitely since that analyst day with INQ, they've had this reversal, finally a catalyst that's helped them get out of the dregs because for a long time, LAS was just going straight down. One of the issues with LAS, it's very far ahead of its time. CLSQ is building post-quantum chips for a post-quantum world, but we're not even in a quantum world yet. So talk about being early to something. And of course, you know, this could, it's possible that CLSQ could could not work out as an investment and all investments carry risk, especially quantum stocks. I need to repeat that, um, especially for those who are new to the channel. But we have bounced off of this 250 level and we're starting to capture some new levels, which I'll show you in my drawings here. We did capture 350 today. We didn't close above 350, but we had a look above 350. And that's getting pretty close to 388. I think the next significant zone of resistance for CLSQ would be 388. Long time followers of the channel know that 388 has been a consistent spot for LAES to get through. And we're just gonna have to kind of keep that on watch. A close above 388 would be very bullish for CLSQ. All right, so Veritone. So Veritone recently did their offering. We had the CEO on the channel. We like overall this potential turnaround story. Full disclosure, I have long positions and calls and I'm enjoying seeing kind of the volume and the bullish price action since their earnings where they had an earning surprise on revenue. And it does seem that maybe this time could be a turnaround story for them. But remember, you got to look to the left with your investments and you got to understand that this company at one point was trading at $70 a share, then 50, then 40. So the stock has been beaten up for years and years and years. One thing is that Ryan Stilberg, the CEO of Veritone, has been going on YouTube and talking to people like me, just like normal people like me and sharing information about his company. I think more CEOs should spend time speaking to the YouTube community because there's a lot of us on here that are just retail investors and we get a lot of our information from YouTubers. And, and that is, uh, I will, I follow a lot of different financial YouTubers and find it a great source of information. So if we look at the one hour candles, we can see that there has been some volatility. So we had that 46% day um, where we went up to 413 a share. And then we had this plummet down to, I believe it was even 280 in the pre-market after they announced their offering. They offered for 25 million. They're about 170-ish million in debt. And they said they're going to pay down some debt with that. So for me, I didn't mind the offering at all. And as you can see, the price has recovered. We're almost at $4 a share. And Baritone is looking very good on uh, the different four hour and even weekly charts. So watching that continuing to the upside. And then finally, we're going to talk quickly about Archer Aviation. So there's been a lot of buzz about Archer Aviation, no pun intended. 
And if we just look at a very simple, one of the simplest things you can do on a stock chart is draw a rising support. We've had a little bit of a bounce here off the rising support and we just found the, the lows and we connected them. And what we're seeing is a few things. We see that the CEO is very cozy with this White House. And we see that there is a push from the White House to accelerate EVA tolls. So this should help Joby and Archer. Archer had a 4% day. And if we look more closely at price action, it does appear that we are getting a bounce off that rising support. And if we remember the way Archer moves, the most recent high, that would be a 46% of upside. Now, I also look at the downside for a play like Archer, and I wanna go all the way back to April 7th where the stock was really washed out and it was $5 a share. And it did, it looks like validate this $8 uh, share um, and I just don't see it going down to $5 a share, not with all the momentum they have. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I hope you really enjoyed that. The market has been good to me lately. I hope it's been good to all of you as well. Rate cuts are coming. Hopefully we get a good rate cut and hopefully the market can stay in good shape. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Are we getting into a market that is toppy, uh, toppy and frothy? Or is this the market we should have had all along, but the tariff scare really kind of was the big pullback for the year? Let me know what you think in the comments and thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. I hope you really enjoyed that content. If you would like to support this YouTube channel, I have three different membership levels starting at $4.99 a month. They include Quantum Bull, Gold Bull, and Diamond Bull. Head over and click the plus button. You can learn more about these memberships and find out which one is right for you.